Morning Year 7, it's Mr Lifeup. This is the second lesson in our series of lessons on ratio. Okay. So last week I introduced the idea of ratios and now this week we're going to look at simplifying a ratio. Simplifying a ratio with different units and then comparing two quantities using ratios. Okay, so once again there's a start question. Pause the video, have a go at answering the question and I'll show the answers in a second. Good. This is the answer. Okay. If we know that six people um, plant 90 trees, assuming that they all plant at a constant rate, then one person must plant 15 trees that day. Okay. If I know that one person plants 15 trees, then the people must plant 150 trees. Okay. And it makes sense because the, if we increase the number of people, then the number of trees that are going to be planted will increase also. Okay, so well done if you got that. Once again, there is a big target question. Okay, um, it involves writing a ratio, simplifying a ratio, and then thinking about writing it in this form. Okay, so once again, pause the video, have a go at the question, and we'll return to the question at the end of the video. Right, last week I introduced the idea of ratio using this diagram. Okay, uh, it's got 24 fish in it, and there are three different types of fish. There are fish with spots, stripes, and plain. Okay, and I said that we could write down the number of fish as a ratio, and a ratio would look like this. Okay, so for every three fish with spots, there are nine striped fish and 12 plain fish okay i also did mention that we could simplify the ratio if it would simplify and looking at these numbers clearly all of these numbers are in the three times table okay so if it, i divide each number by three and because i'm dividing them all i'm allowed to do that i can simplify the ratio okay and that also works for the number of fish we've got to hasn't it if there are 24 fish, if I divide 24 by 3, I'm going to get 8. Okay, so instantly I've simplified the ratio and made the number smaller and therefore easier to work with. Okay, so this lesson we're going to look at simplifying ratios. Good. Pretty straightforward questions. If you're going to be asked to simplify a ratio, it stands to reason that the ratios will simplify. Okay. And if I take this question here, what I'm going to do is look for a number that divides into both of these numbers. It's got to be the same number. It's like simplifying a fraction. Okay. I need a number that divides into both of these numbers and therefore enables me to simplify okay it's the same with a ratio okay because we said last week that ratios are simply fractions okay so look at the question it, it doesn't take much brains to realize that i can divide both these numbers by five okay both of them by five and if i do that i find that i can simplify this ratio okay so five is in the 25 plus five 5 and 15 equals 3. Okay, so instantly, if I had to do something else with this ratio, in other words, use it in a calculation, the numbers now are smaller and easier to use. Okay, I'd much rather use 5 to 3 than 25 to 15. Okay, and it's the same for these two questions. Okay, so we find a number that divides into both of these numbers. And we simplify. So pause the video, see if you can simplify these two numbers. Good, okay. So this is what I got. Um, obviously, we've just done the first question. Divide by 5, I get 5 to 3. Um, and looking at 48 and 16, I know that I can divide both of these by 2 if I wished, okay, to get 24 and 8, okay. But the plan 
and the knack is to simplify and keep simplifying until I cannot simplify anymore. Okay, so looking at this question here, I know that 8 goes into 48 and 16. If I divide 48 and 16 by 8, I'm going to get 6 to 2. But I also can simplify 6 to 2. Okay, so the name of the game here is to keep simplifying until you cannot simplify anymore. For example, 3 to 1, I can't find a number other than 1 that divides into 3 and 1. Okay, so 48 to 16 simplifies to 3 to 1. Okay, and it's exactly the same for this question here. This is a simplified version of 800 to 200 but it's not simplified fully, okay? 8 to 2 divided by 2 gets 4 to 1, okay? So the reason I simplify fully is so that the numbers are as small as possible. These numbers are a lot easier to work with than these numbers, okay? So when we're simplifying, we have to simplify fully. It's like simplifying a fraction. If I take the same fraction again, my 4 over 8, I can, if I wish, simplify this to 2 over 4. But 2 over 4 isn't fully simplified. I have to keep simplifying until I cannot simplify anymore. Okay? Good. Now, this question here is a bit of a special case. We did touch on this last week. Sometimes you'll get a ratio as a decimal. Okay. Now again, decimals are a bit scary to use. They're a bit more difficult to deal with if I have to do a further calculation. Okay. So what I'm allowed to do is essentially create an equivalent ratio. Okay. If I multiply both sides by two. I get three to four, okay? Easier to work with than this. Okay? Good. So to simplify a ratio, we just simplify, we find a number that, that goes into both numbers and we simplify until it's fully simplified, okay? That might take several steps, okay? Here I've only used two. But if I divide by two, it could take several steps. Just keep going until it cannot simplify anymore. Okay, good. Sometimes we're going to get ratios that contain contain different units. Now the one thing you've got to remember is that the ratio must be the same units. Okay, so I can't have pounds and pence, grams and kilograms, meters and kilometers. They've got to be the same units. Okay. Now the difficult thing about answering these questions is that you've got to understand how to convert units. Okay, so for example, you need to know how many grams are in a kilogram or how many meters are in a kilometer or how many pence are in a pound. Okay, so they must contain the same units. So before I answer this question, I'm going to change the units to the same units. Okay. Now, ideally, you want to be getting rid of the decimals and making life easy for yourself, okay? So I would change this to pence, okay? If I change them to pence, they're now the same unit. And now it simply just needs to simplify them. Okay, so I need to find a number that goes into 25, sorry, 250 and 40. If I divide by 10, excuse the writing, I'm using a mouse. I get 25 to 4, okay. And 25 to 4 will not simplify. There isn't a number that divides into 4 and 25 other than 1 that I can use to simplify this ratio. So when you get ratios of different units, they've got to be the same units, okay? So for example, I would have to change this ratio to grams if I wanted to get rid of the decimals, okay? 
I don't have to get rid of the decimals. I could keep them as, as, as decimals. So I could write 0 0.3. Oh, the writing's so bad. For 1.5. But, you know, that's a bit more difficult to understand than this. It's certainly a bit more difficult to simplify. Okay? Same for this one. If I change them to meters, again, it's easier to simplify. Okay? Good. Okay. So I've changed pounds to pence, kilograms to grams, kilometers to meters, and I've just simplified. Okay? But look how much easier these are to deal with than these. You know, if I had to do a calculation or perform a calculation after simplifying, it's so much easier to deal with the simplified version than it is the original version. But just remember, they mean the same thing. They're not different. Okay, so once again, if a ratio has different units, you have to convert to make sure that they've got the same units. Good. Lastly, okay, there might be a case where you have to compare two quantities. Okay. Now, I've used an example that hopefully explains this. So just ignore this for now and just have a look at the pictures. Okay. Um, I've got red paint, white paint, red paint, white paint. Okay. And the question is, red and white paint can be mixed to make pink paint. Which of the mixes below will give the lightest shade of pink? Okay, now it's quite difficult to arrive at an answer to this question because I've got different quantities here and different quantities here. Okay, I need a way of making these quantities the same so I can compare them. Okay, and there's essentially two methods. All right, if I look at this question here, red to white. Okay, there are four red parts to every three white parts. If I take this one, red to white, there are three to two. Okay, now the easiest way to compare these values is to get these numbers the same. Okay, so what I mean by that is that if I can get the red or white values to the same number on both sides, I can compare them. Uh, white, okay. So, um, just randomly, if I get um, the red values to the same number, okay, and what I mean by that is, can I multiply four and three by a number to get the same number? Okay. So in other words, what's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 3? 12. Okay. What if I done to 4 to get it to 3? I've multiplied by 3. I do the same to y. What if I done to 3 to get it to 12? I've multiplied by 4. I do the same to y. Okay, and remember I'm allowed to do that. We've done a lot of work on fractions and creating equivalent fractions. I'm allowed to do the same with ratios. Okay, now look, I can now directly compare them because two of the quantities are now the same. Now I can answer the question, which of these mixes below will we give the lightest shade of pink? Lightest shade of pink, okay. There are more white parts in this mix than there are in this mix. Okay, so presumably, not being an expert on colour, if there are more white parts in this one than this one, then this must give the lighter shade of pink. This must be darker than this shade. Okay, 
Oh, I need to get the units the same. Now that will give us an answer. Okay. Now the thing about ratio is that we like to get the numbers as small as possible. Rather than me getting the numbers big, because if you think about it, the lowest common multiple of a number could be quite big. If I can get one of the numbers to one, then I can compare them. Okay, so if I write out the quantities again in my really bad writing, four to three and three to two. Okay, now the question says write it in the form of a one to n. Okay, one to something, one to something. n is going to be another number. Okay, we're holding a bit of algebra, we know what n means, it's just a random number. Okay, so the left hand side of the ratio must be one. We've got to find the other number. Okay. And we're doing essentially the same thing. We're getting one side of each ratio to the same number, i.e. one. Okay. So have a think about how I get four to one. Good. I divide by four. Okay. Four divided by four is one. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay, so in other words, I've got to divide this by four. Three divided by four. Three divided by four. No, 0.75. Okay, you could leave it as a fraction if you wanted. What I do to three, we get it to one. I divide by three. Three divided by three is one. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Two divided by three is two thirds, or is a decimal, 0.6 reoccurring. Now, granted, this looks a bit more messy than this, okay? But it gives us the same answer. If you look, 0.75 is bigger than 0.6 reoccurring. So there must be more white in this mix than in this mix, okay? But what I've done is I've got the numbers as small as possible. Because remember, all I'm doing is comparing two ratios. Okay, now mathematics and the type of question you're going to get will involve you writing it in this form. This works brilliantly, but we prefer it in this form. Numbers as small as possible. Okay, so remember, if I divide a number by itself, it becomes a one. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. And I can either write the ratio or the answer as a fraction or preferably a decimal. Okay, good. So you, you have a go at yourself, okay? Just bear in mind that I want it written in the form of one to n and just to go over what we've just done, one must be on this side. The number you're after finding is the n number, okay? Four divided by four is one, do the same 12, okay? 1 to n, 1 to n, and these are usually decimals, okay, not always, more than likely will be decimals, okay, so pause the video, have a go, and we'll go through the answers, good, okay, um, looking at what I got, remember that um, if I divide a number by itself, I get 1. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 3 divided by 10 is 0.3. And remember, you can also write this as a, as a, as a fraction. Um, you know, if you don't have a calculator or 
these numbers are quite difficult. Write it as a fraction, it just becomes a little more difficult to compare. Okay, but if we were looking at these two values, clearly 3.5 is larger than 0.3. Okay. Quite straightforward, okay. But remember, it's got to be in that format. Sometimes it might be n to 1. Okay, so when you get a question, read the question and have a look at what form it wants it in. Okay, good. Right, to finish off, remember the virtual schools. Okay, this is the address. Um, the lessons will be on here. Um, please remember that this lesson and all the lessons um, are on YouTube okay so please tell your friends about lessons explaining each of these worksheets okay and also remember that there are a couple of questions there are not many questions on this on maths watch um, because I couldn't find many suitable ones but there are two lessons on maths watch um, one for Monday and one for Wednesday okay once again if you have any issues at all please send me an email and I'll do my best to help. Okay, and lastly, big tag question. Okay, so pause the video, have a go at answering the question. Um, we should be able to do this quite easily and then think about writing it in this form. Excellent, hopefully, this is correct, and uh, these are the answers that you got. Okay, so for A, 160 to 200 simplifies to 45. Look how small these numbers are compared to these numbers. A lot easier to work with. Okay, and B, write uh, your answer to part A in the form 1N. Okay, um, to get 4 to 1, I divide by 4. I divide it by 4 is 1.25 or you could write the answer like that okay if you've been a bit lazy and you want to work it out okay or you could write it like that actually either way that's correct okay so thanks for listening once again any problems send me an email if not stay safe